Hello again, and thank you for tuning in to our program. Come along as I tackle another case of mystery and intrigue, gathering clues and information along the way. Meet some lowlifes and good friends as I discover the truth of this situation. I am William Nichols, Private Investigator. Welcome back to Act 5 of No Picket Fences. This episode is called The Map. But first, a word from our sponsors. Hey, moms, got all the local children playing in your backyard? Well, when the little darlings come in and they're hungry, pull out a box of Waltz Wafers. Waltz Wafers are packed full of energy. So pick up a box today in your grocer's freezer aisle and give them two with a glass of their favorite beverage and send the little sweethearts on their way. Waltz Wafers, on sale now. Waltz Wafers are not responsible for insomnia, erratic behavior, or dental disease in your children. Welcome back to Act 5 of No Picket Fences. I got off the phone with the coroner. The other detective on duty and the coroner are on their way. The two of you are welcome to have a seat on my fine outdoor furniture while we wait. Barney, I'm sorry to hear about your father. He was a great guy and quite the comedian. Did what he could for the neighborhood. That is correct, but oh, he didn't like slackers. I wasn't sure who was going to take over the scrapyard after... He was fit as a fiddle. Yet, yeah, he had a heart attack, the doctor said. I don't trust doctors anyways. Fighting that fire on 2nd Street last winter. And you know, Eddie. Yes, I know, Barney. I'm with the police department. I know it was arson. But we need to talk about Flip, if that's who he is. I was hoping you would see if you could identify him for us. Where he died is how he lived. I don't know much about him. Not sure where he stayed. He jumped around a lot from place to place from what I heard. Flip was a fence, I said? Not at first. He was honest. You know, clearing out people's yards and garages. Just like you used to do, Billy. But this past year, he had been acting funny, skittish. Sneaky. Then this past month or so, he had been bringing these unreputable characters around here. I told him I didn't want to see him or those filthy characters around here anymore. Just didn't like the looks of them. He must have started using Donna's back door of the fence. How many men? There was two of them. What did the men look like? One of them was well-dressed, sort of weaselly looking wears a white hat, and always has a cigar in his mouth. Looks more like a bookie than a scrapper. The cigar didn't even have to be lit. The other one, tall and skinny, nothing out of the ordinary, except he had a scar right down the middle of his nose. The skinny guy was quiet. The other guy did all the talking. I never caught the names. They grunted and pointed or said, Hey, you! Found it odd. I just couldn't trust them. Those two sound like they could be master fences. And Flip was just one on the lower end. Could be, Eddie. That would make sense to me. But why did Flip get all shifty? Thank you, Barney. Eddie, you look baffled. Yes, thank you, Barney. Those two descriptions are ringing a bell, but the bell isn't ringing too loudly at the moment. And I'm trying to remember what Flip's real name was. Barney started running down a name list out loud. It reminded me of Penny and I in the office before she started the new filing system. Oh, gosh darn it. What was his name? Dean? Fred? Frank? Poyer. Foyer. Johns. Joan. Jimmy. Jimmy. It was Jimmy Foyer. 
He gave me a map before I kicked him out of this place. But why would he do that? I thought it was odd, too. Would I need to have a blasted map for my own place? But I was so mad at him, I didn't give it a second thought. Let me go see if I can find it. Barney, can I use your phone? I have to call into the office. Sure, Billy. It's over here in the office. In the desk somewhere. His office looked worse than what mine did before Penny started. He had bulletin boards on the walls with notes wallpapering them. Thick repair manuals and stacks of magazines. Parts of something that was dismantled on the floor and on the office desk, with more papers scattered around. Nothing was in files, papers just stacked and dripping off the desk and onto the floor. I called Penny and told her the news and to start writing up a case file or something for future reference. I asked her to make notes of the Phelps Gibson family that she might know. It was Donna who started all this to begin with, so I haven't been hired but this was going to be interesting. Plus, I'm just helping out Detective Eddie now. I gave her the information over the phone that Barney and Donna had given to me and then hung up. The coroner and another patrol car drove up to the gate and Eddie went to meet them and jumped in the car with the coroner. I thought Barney felt brother who did it. Barney was still shuffling over the notes on the bulletin boards like he was looking at fine works of art. I went outside, listened to the birds, and watched the rain clouds that were slowly but steadily rolling in. Billy, I found it. I found the map. I know that cop might have told you about my family. I'm telling you the honest truth, Billy. I had nothing to do with Flip's death. Flip giving me this map, he must have known his days were numbered. But he was too scared to say anything. I was too angry at him to notice. I'm going to need your help. Barney handed me the scrap of paper with the map on it, coffee stained, greasy fingerprinted note paper, $50 and a pen. The paper read, I hereby hire Billy Nichols, private investigator, for $50. And it was signed, Barney Phelps. If it wasn't for me making Donna that back door, this probably wouldn't have happened. At least not on my property. I don't need that kind of trouble. Who would believe me that I made a door for her and not a back door for back door dealings? I understand what you're saying, and your family's past won't help you out. People do hold grudges. Yeah, they hold grudges for no good reason sometimes, too. I admit, a few of my family members did a few shady things in the past, but we never killed or robbed anyone. May have traded apples for oranges, but we never outright robbed anyone. This was a slippery slope I was on, the triangle between Donna, Barney, and Eddie. But I signed the paper and we shook hands. I told him, I will try my best. I sat down with Barney and we tried to decipher this odd map. The front entrance was not on it? No, Billy. The fence isn't on it at all. But I think this could be Donna's door. This half circle thing. It could be the squiggles are lumber piles, and the blobs are stacked cars. That means this thick line is the road. Barney flipped the map upside down, sideways, and held it up to see if he could see through it. It was like drawing a map in the sand and not on a piece of paper. We figured out the edges of the paper was the fence, and there was an X right by Donna's door. And that's the end of Chapter 5 of No Picket Fences. Please tune in next time for Chapter 6, titled Trouble or Treasure. Thanks again for listening. 
please comment, subscribe, share with your friends, and tune in next time. This has been a Radio Static production, and now ends our broadcasting day.